Hello and welcome back to Music Nuggets. Today's nugget was inspired by a request made in the comments of my pedal board episode where I'm using my swell, my granny sweller effect to sustain chords underneath sort of solo-y stuff. Mattia has asked, can I go over some of the chord progressions that I was using because he thought they were great, but he couldn't figure some of them out, couldn't get his head around the voicings. Um, I kind of don't blame you because they're a bit weird and they have a weird relationship to each other. So what I played at the beginning there was just the chords that I used in that ambient thing, but in more of a rhythmic context. And as soon as I started to do that, I realized that it was even weirder than it seems. Um, so they're, they're kind of taken from a song that I wrote with my band Bloke Music and it's based on sus chords that move around in diminished intervals or, or they move downwards in minor thirds. So, so I'm going to talk a bit about that and also just like how great sus chords are and how they can be used as mechanisms to take a song somewhere else or change key unpredictably. Um, so let's just jump right in with the sus chords from that song. I'll deal with that first and then deal with some other reasons that I think sus chords are really cool. So first one, the holiest of chords, G sus. Um, so it's G sus4 and that's going root, fifth. So it's root, fifth, root again, fourth, fifth and then root. You only really need the bottom four voices or the top four voices if you like um, because there's only four voices in that chord. So, so that was the first chord that I played in that ambient jam and at the thing that you saw at the beginning. The cool thing about any sus chord is really um, it could be major or minor because there's no third in it. That's what sus chords are. You are suspending the third, that's where the sus part comes from, and then the number that goes after the sus, that's whatever note you've replaced the third with. So in this case you've taken out the third, let's say it's G major, and you've replaced it with a perfect fourth. Now you've probably seen sus4 and sus2 in lots of chord charts, so that could just as easily be sus2. Here's the major third. So for that to be sus2, it would just be root, second, fifth. So we're thinking like G major scale, one, two, three, four, five, one, three, five. Instead of one, three, five, you take one, two, and there's a G sus2. So G sus2, G sus4. And it's used all over the place in pop music. The, the first one that comes to mind is that Katie Tunstall song that goes. So that's just a D, D sus2, D sus4, D sus2. So they're all over the place. You'll hear them everywhere. They're in a lot of Oasis songs and things like that as well. Um, second song in that progression, so the, the second chord in that progression even. So we had G sus4, then E sus2. So that's going root, 
think of it as like a C shape E major that we're deriving this from. So root, major third, fifth, root. Let's replace the major third with a second. The second will always be a tone down from a major third. So root, second, fifth, and root again. And then the third chord in that progression was a D flat sus two. Um, is it D flat? Yeah. So that's going root fifth, root second. And you could compare that to a major chord again. So there's a D flat major. Down a tone is what we want to replace it with. And there is D flat sus two. You can put that top note in, in the bar if you want because it's just a, a repeat of the fifth. And then the last chord was this one, B flat sus two. So again, it's just the similar voicing as this one. It's the same voicing as this this one, just on a fifth string, sixth string root even. So root second fifth and then root again and what's actually happening with these is I've drawn them as if they've been derived from the major chords that come from a diminished scale so I talked a bit about this in the WTF is diminished scale episode but basically we've got a G chord so this is G diminished half whole so you can see a G triad if we go down a minor third from G, now all diminished scale is, is it repeats in minor thirds. So there's E major, an E major chord. So we've got G major, E major, and then we've got D flat major. So that's here, D flat, fifth, root, third. And then we've got a B flat major. You can just about see one there. There's B flat major third, fifth root. And what's cool about using those sus chords is you can, you can, you've got more options for scales that you can use when you're soloing over it. But also, um, the if you're soloing over the sus chords, then people might not be expecting a major or a minor third. Um, so what I was doing when I was soloing over it, over that one, because I've got a sus4 and then I've got three sus2 chords, over the other ones I was kind of using Lydian stuff, or over the middle two, over these two I was using Lydian material, but I couldn't use Lydian over that chord because it's a sus4, it's got a fourth in it, so Lydian is a major scale with a sharp four. So if I played Lydian over that, I would get I would get that note against that note. So it would be like it would sound like this, which is rank. Um, so what I was using there was kind of like a dominant pentatonic thing. Take your minor pentatonic and just put all your thirds up a semitone, all your minor thirds up a semitone. So like. There's a minor third. Move it up a semitone to a major third. There's a minor third. Move it up a semitone to a major third. And so what I'm doing is with each of these chords I'm implying that they're major in some way. In this case this one's implied to be dominant because there's a flat seven in that scale. And then with the E sus2, I'm making that more of a Lydian thing. So that's like. So I'm going from. And then the next chord, I'm kind of implying that that's Lydian too. And then with the B flat, I'm implying that that's uh, 
kind of like a, an add nine arpeggio. Which sounds super happy on its own if it just sits on that, like too happy, very cheesy. Um, but because you've got the context of all this weirdness, it, it makes it okay, it's like a bit of a release. Um, at least in my ears anyway. But the coolest thing about all of this stuff is if you, if you see them as major chords, then the major third of each next chord is a semitone above the root of each previous chord. So like, if I'm playing the G thing to begin with, here's that G dominant stuff. There's the, the G. Of course, the major third of the E that's coming next is G sharp. So there's that major third. There's the root of the E. The major third of the D flat sus2 is a semitone above that. There's the root of the D flat. The major third of the B add nine, or the B flat, sorry, add nine kind of stuff is a semitone up for that. So going from the D flat to the B flat, it sounds like this. And then there's the root of the B flat, and here's the major third of the approaching G. So if you, if you choose to solo like that, it gives you this really cool effect of all the roots are going down. I mean, you've basically got, like, there's G sus4 up here. Here's E sus2. There's D flat sus2, and there's B flat sus2. So it's going... But every time you change your solo material, it lifts because you've got this, this movement from the root of each chord to the major third of the next chord. So it's a really dramatic key change. Um, so I hope that's what Mattia found interesting about all that. And at least that clears up what I did with the chords for Mattia. Um, and hopefully gives you some interesting ideas generally about how to use sus chords. But there's a ton of different ways that they can be useful. They're, they're kind of just like trickery machines um, if, if you want to do really like uh, unusual composition. So let's take a look at them from two different angles. Let's take a look at sus chords just statically and the things that you can do over them because they're so vague. And then let's take a look at what you can do with a simple progression to fool the listener as well. So the first thing statically, we'll do something like, let's just take F sus2, just for the sake of it, so. Okay, so let's think about what we have in that chord. We've just got a root, a second and a fifth basically so with that in mind we can use any scale that has a root a second and a fifth in it so it could easily just be major is chord one we could treat it as chord two because chord two has a root dorian has a root a second and a fifth in it so we could treat it as a bluesy thing because uh blue scale has a like a fifth and a flat fifth in it so
Okay, which tree is card three? No, because card three implies a flat nine. Phrygian has a flat nine in it, so that's going to just sound really off. Your flat nine is going to clash with the second. So a nine and a second are the same thing. A flat two is going to sound awful against a, against a two. I mean, let's let's just do it so that so that we've this or proved that. Yeah, we don't need to go any further. Um, I mean, if you want to do really tense sounding stuff, kind of has a sound, but it's technically not harmonizing. It could be Lydian, because Lydian has a major second in it too. like any sort of triad pairsy things that you can do that imply Lydian um, or major would, would do the same trick um, so like what's a good way to imply F Lydian like uh, mm, wrong one so like this So G and F triads would Im imply F Lydian. Which is cool. Um, what else could we do? We could make it dominant because again there's no seventh in it and there's no third, so we could just we could decide that that's what we want to do. So like F dominant stuff. We could do F Aeolian, so F natural minor. Locrian. So we couldn't treat it as chord 7 again because there's a flat 2nd and a flat 5 in Locrian so it would just be like ultimate clash. Two notes that would be clashing. Again you could try it if you really want to create tension and weird polychords but it's probably not a, not a great idea. Um, so you can hear that statically there's so much potential and that's we've not even tackled like chords from melodic minor I mean let's just let's just do one just or two for the sake of it um, you could do chord four or chord five from melodic minor you could do chord one from melodic minor you could yeah that's probably it I think um, other ones you might get away with but again there's going to be those clashes so chord four let's let's say chord one of melodic minor so uh, minor with a major 7, F minor with a major 7, or just F melodic minor. F minor major 7 arpeggio. Let's look at chord four, F Lydian dominant this kit in this case, so sounds great. Uh, chord five but transposed to F, so that would be F mixolydian flat 6. Sounds 
awesome, sounds really epic. Um, so tons and tons of possibilities. Um, it gets more interesting but kind of more difficult to make the right choices with when you start combining sus cards. Um, so like a good simple one that I've kind of thought about beforehand would be if we use F sus2 and C sus2 and B flat sus2. So let's just put a loop down of that and then I'll explain what my ideas are here. So I'm going to make this nice and easy so I'm just going to shift from just so I don't have to think about weird fretting. So Okay, so the first obvious choice to, to me, I'm thinking, is that could be chord, it could be chord one, chord five, and chord four in a major key. Because in F major, chord one is F, uh, chord four is B flat, and chord five is C, or C7. So we could just play F major stuff, Actually, let's look at the minor equivalent first. Because the effect is going to be cooler when I change. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is think about this being... I'm going to play F minor uh, over the first chord. And then over the second chord, I'm going to play C minor. So I'm thinking F Dorian over the first one. And then I'm thinking C Aeolian over the second one. And F, sorry, B flat Mixolydian over the last one. So like, I'm treating it like it's these three chords. But then, so that's, that's really like chord two, is it chord two? Yeah, so chord two, chord six, and chord five in the key of E flat major. And then I'm gonna shift to playing, I'm gonna think about it being, I'm gonna think about it being F major to C dominant to B flat major or like B flat Lydian kind of stuff. And you'll hear like how much of a sort of modal lift that gets, how much of a, it's basically modal interchange. So we're, we're, we're shifting between the key of E flat major and F major, so. back to the minor key. Or back to E flat major, I should say. So the minor one. F major.
back to E flat major. So you can hear how cool the opportunities that are there for modal interchange whilst keeping the same chord progression. I think that's a really interesting composing trick. And that's kind of like a super cheesy idea, but it makes it a little bit easier to understand if, if you're just trying to get your head around this for the first time. So sus chords can kind of be any chords, major or minor, depending on how you, how you arrange them. Um, Hopefully that's given you some ideas. I hope you liked what you watched today. If you did, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit like, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.